Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Hoop Room at Hoopsters, the League of Action Heroes. In our endeavor to bring you discussions on subjects let's talk about, we are today in conversation with Arun Desai, who will talk to us about the art of paper sculpting, also called origami. He has a studio called Chite, where he designs 3D pop up structures and he exports paper sculptures to various countries around the world. And I mean, lots of other fun things that it does. We are going to get an understanding today about origami and how this art can be used to teach subjects at schools and colleges. So Arun, welcome to the show and thank you very much for agreeing to be part of this whole venture. The first question which I would like to ask you is, why did you agree to come on this show itself? Bala is my good friend. <clears throat> okay. First <laughs> point, yeah, and, yeah. Before before we begin, yeah, good enough. Like, question is that like, it's it's more so. It's been a it's a, now you know what's happening outside, so we are all confined to our quadrilaterals, right? I'm 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 basically a postgraduate in mathematics, so I'm an associate professor of mathematics, and uh, uh, I want to reach out to people more of more of the people there. So, and Bala contacted me for the same. Yeah. I said I will just come on air. For a live demo and the interaction as a, as a interview based program. So I agree with you for that. Yes. More so, you can, because of the advent of the technology, you can reach out to more people now. So I think let me just sensitize and give a fun to people around me and make those little sounds happy for the day. Perfect. That sounds nice. Be a bit louder, please. If, you know, since you're on the, on the uh, computer mic, we have some issues. Okay. Arun, mm -hmm. tell us a bit about your journey, your journey into origami, your journey into math mathematics. I mean, it's a very interesting thing how somebody's taken a subject like origami. I mean, we all used to do it for a hobby and stuff like that, but you getting into you know, full-fledged professional. Why did you do that? So what led you into it? Yeah, okay. Well, uh, it's, it all boils down to my childhood. So uh, when I look back now, even up maybe 35, 40 years of working with paper, and when I look back, you know, uh, I literally feel that there's nothing much that I've learned later, right? After, uh, uh, after my post-graduation or maybe after the research and all that. But I think I learned more as a child, with respect to the paper as a medium. Because that is the one thing that I got to my hand. So and my mother uh, was maybe around six, seven or eight years old by then. Uh, she taught me how to make a paper boat. And that is the only thing that she knew by then. Uh, and even the papers were at dirt those years. So even the, the newspaper that you used to get out of the grocery, they used to make a cone and then used to pack the groceries in right, and then you thread it up later. And we used to come back and then open the threads and then make them into small spools and all those things. And, and we used to cut those newspapers into small squares and then make them, uh, uh, she used to make me do the boots out of that squares. And that is the only thing that I learned from her. Um, she was very perfectionist that we like. You know, she used to say like, this has not come out nice, make another one. So I used to go back and make another square and then make another one. So she never used to leave me you know, she, until she is satisfied with making the good ones. So thereby repeating of the uh, repetition of the same, making the boat, maybe hundreds of them. I just perfected the art of folds, actually. I never knew that there's a word called origami exists by then. And now I'm a senior folder with the origami USA, where I give the lessons for them online also. Hey, but so Arun, we, Arun, we all make yeah. boats, okay, when you're small. All of us, I think everybody has made boards. But what took you to the next level? I mean, what was it about that whole thing of paper and doing something with it that took you to the next level? Yeah, yeah, it, it is it is, it is, is a fascination for the material itself. You know, like the flat sheet of paper, which is just flat, lays flat like this. You know, just upon folding few folds on the paper, that stands up in a 3D bit. That is what really fascinated me. And even today, after working for more, I think I've done every almost every kind of work on the, with the paper, and I keep pushing the limits even today. And I, I feel that fascination of the paper that you know, no, look no, at no. this material that you know, just by the few folds and few cuts. You know, rather the, it started with the folds at the beginning. Later, she introduced me to cuts also. She gave me a beautiful scissor by then. Whatever that that scissor that she gave me, I started practicing cutting with, with, along with the folds. So that is how I was good in both folds and cuts together. As a child, I used to cut, cut, cut limitlessly. And she, I, I still remember my mother telling me that she used to give me lots of paper there. And she used to say, cut to your heart. That is, look at that. It's limitless. The, the kind of the, the motivation that I used to get from her is that she never used to stop me from folding or cutting for that matter. And, and she, she keeps telling me that, you know, like whenever I used to cry as a small child, she used to give me a 
a pair of scissors and the few sheets of paper. I used to keep quiet and start working with it. So that is what really the material fascinates me. Nothing else. So, so what, I take what, the material. What I take about the material? The material? And apply it wherever I want. Like you know, it's become so crazy now that I have developed so much of techniques, you know, knowledge by itself. Because I'm self-taught. I never followed any origami books or whatever for that matter. Okay, I just developed my own style of handling it. And today I don't just start. I mean, uh, uh, I would say the logistically, I just follow the folds. I do whatever that I want with the paper and get I get what I want in the paper. That's how it is. Rather, I give the paper the samskara. Once the paper comes to my hand, it undergoes all kind of things with my hands. And then I get what I want in the paper. That's how it is. Approach has been so uh, uh, crazy, like, you know, like, and I handle it like that. And it is more of a tactile feel that I interact with the paper in the interview. You are talking so romantically yes. about a paper in today's era of digital. Okay. And uh, so yeah, what I want yeah, to ask yeah. tell you is there's a lot of children here on your show, which is amazing. What about 50 odd kids around on yeah. the show? Well, before the show continues to its depths, why do you think the children just to stay back? What do you think they learn in this in the next one hour? Yeah, it's it's it, it is it is uh, very difficult to quantify in terms of the the, the quantum of learning that you take home. It's, it's all up to your heart and mind. How you observe me, how you, what all you observe, what all you take, and what all you understand out of the demonstration that I'm going to make. So more so, like as a child, I, I just started working. Like you know, the problem today is that as I said, the digital world that has killed our creativity to a great extent. They have only seen the things in the virtual world. They they are not experienced the real sense of materials and all that. Even for that matter, even the design students that I had, the, the very previous session that I had for about four and a half hours was that only the furniture design and all that so that is how it is like basically the materiality is not understood by the today's kids i'm not talking about just the kids even the postgraduates whom i am i teach there also there's a lacuna that means they don't they don't they're not handling the materials at all they don't know how the materials behave so for, for me like you know like i feel that every material speaks out its own character right it is for you to understand with your fingers and react with it that so what does paper create. what does paper mean to you yeah, a paper, paper is no, no more a material to me, it's an emotion. The moment I get a paper to my hand, my senses get 10 times sharper. And I start reacting with the paper and then get what, what I want to the paper. I will have some kind of a mental plan in my mind and I get carried with it. Like I crumple, I cut, I fold, I paste. I do what not, I do everything what I want, whatever that I like to what that extent and just get what I want to the paper. That's how we, it's more of an intuitive way of approach to a medium. I think okay. that's, that is one thing that really lack in i see particularly the kids in particular i don't know like they hardly have seen the paper uh, as a material to be written off maybe or as a book form or whatever but not as a uh, the, 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 the material that has a huge potential okay the, I, mean, I like what you said about it being emotional there are different colors to a paper there's different sizes of paper there's different thickness of paper so what do all these things mean to you when you touch them what do you feel what what happens to you well, I, 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 as the paper comes to my hand, I, I just sense it. Well, whatever it is, whether I take a 220 GSM or a 150 GSM paper, I, I just sense it immediately. I can make out that uh, my reflexes are so sharp. And I, I plan my things, you know, like accordingly, like the approach, what we call the approach of the paper. Right? I, I, it happens automatically. That's how I'm used to it. Like, you know, paper is more material, it's an emotion. But I just go crazy with it. Maybe initially, if the format is too large, I may have some key markings in terms of measurements and all that. And I get going with it in terms of development of the medium there. Because paper being a flat sheet of material, there's something known as technically, something known as surface development. That's what comes to a form. Because a flat sheet of paper, you're bringing it to a form. You're sculpting it out literally with all the mathematical thought that goes into it. Right? With the mathematical thought in terms of measurements, yes. If there's no measurement also, there's some kind of an estimation that goes in my mind and that's how I handle the paper. That also works. So it's called, we call it the estimation or an approximation. So paper being a medium, I just handle it to get it to the form. Okay, now tell me one thing. When you see a paper, do you get ideas or do you get ideas and then see a paper? <laughs> it's, it's, it depends on my mood there, exactly. Whether I'm in good mood or a bad mood, I, I express my emotions through paper itself. Whether I'm in good mood, I think I always carry the paper and the scissor with me. It's, it's a part of my anatomy, the bag itself. So I just express myself with that. So that I'm happy, I just want to cut something and pull something and enjoy that kind of that particular moment, you know, and maybe I can share that work with somebody else or the kids around me and all that. 
I do that. Not necessarily that the idea, of course, those kind of master works, I'll have some ideas in my mind to work with it. And then the other measurements, other things come into place. Then we actually get out of the pain. Then we develop it. Okay. I want one sentence from you to the children here as to what they can expect in this show. You will you will get to see it better when you when you progress it rather than to I think it's better to have the curiosity at the back of your mind rather than to explain it what's going to unfold in the program. Okay. I, I always I'm a very curious guy. You okay. know, okay. so okay. I always keep the curiosity on. It's better. Okay. So let's begin with the first question. What is so special about origami? Origami is too old for me, like in a way, like you know, like. No, but for the for the public, no, that's different. But we're I coming back in your. If you go okay, into okay, a life okay. story of yours, let's start from the beginning mm -hmm. and let's get into the basics of origami. Correct, correct. correct. Well, oh, okay. kami means paper, ori means to fold, right? We have just, that's the Japanese word. Uh, 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 and to be that, you know, it's not necessary that you should fold the paper. What, where there's a fold, there's origami. It's as simple as that. Whether you fold your kerchief or you fold your sari or fold your bed sheet or fold your towel, whatever. Where there's a fold, there's origami. To that extent, it's universal. So I, I take it very technical. Right? You know, when I fold my towel so neat, I, it, it comes up so neat. That's how the practice has been, right? That when I fold my kerchief also, it will be so neat. It's not that I just, urgently, I just fold something and keep it in the pocket. It's not like that. So there's a practice, it's what that's come up so well. You know, when I fold the kerchief, it will be so neat. That's how it is. So that's, that's, that's about the folding part of that. Right? Kami means paper, right? Uh, or it means to fold. You are folding the paper, basically, right? And you're, uh, you're, you're folding the paper. I, I think I can make it more technical also, but let us begin from basics so that you are- Yeah, let's go to basics here. Let, I see what I want correct, them is, correct. I want people to understand the joy of the art and how they can use it in their daily life. Correct. I mean, that's correct, the whole correct. purpose of it. We are not into this for the yeah, yeah, scientific yeah. level. So let's- Correct. Okay, so mm -hmm. what's the history of origami? Why, why do you think it even started? I mean, we all know it started in Japan. At least one part of us knows that. But what really is the history? Is there a history to it? Yeah, yeah, of course. In fact, the paper was invented by Chinese. It goes going by the history of it, like, because I don't, never did get much into the history part of that, because I, all I want is a paper to my hand to work with. So who invented it? Who perfected the format of it? Like, I'm not bothered, because I'm myself a creator. I'm a god in a way, that when I create something, I, I, I'm a, a kind of a god, that I, all the elements go into it. My emotions, my technicality, my mathematical thought, my dexterity, everything goes into it. So that's how I look at it. Like I think going back into it, I think Chinese invented the paper and the Japanese perfected the format of folding it. So right. that, that's, they're the people who gave the origami to the world. When did you realize that this was your calling? You know, that calling, yeah, that's great. That's a very good question. That's a very good I want those kind of questions. Like, you know, when I was doing my post graduation, like, you know, like maths was my major subject. So when I, the very first thing that my mother taught me is to fold the paper boat, right? That like anybody has learned it. So I'll just make that one here right now and then establish my mathematical thought of folding the paper boat and how I came to know of there's a mathematics involved in the folds. Okay, I'll try to establish that nexus so that people understand what I do with the folds, right? So I, it's called the non including mathematics and all that. That's quite a higher end of application of the origami, right? Okay, well, I have a square paper here. I'll just explain that because that is what I thought because till then I was only folding the boat. The day came where I unfolded the boat, right? Back to the square and I could see the beautiful pattern coming up there. And that's what you see right now. Okay, I'm just making a small boat. Just for a demonstration. It's best to understand through a demonstration rather than speaking too much on the topic. Okay, and I won't take more than a minute. I'll just finish it. That any, everybody knows that there's making a regular boat. Okay. This is what I've been doing. I'm going to add to it properly. As folds are folds. Flatten it so that I get all the folds in place. When I unfold it, I can see the folds better as a pattern. Okay. Well, this is what the regular boat is, what I'm used to. Okay. I'll unfold it now. I'll put in the reverse gear. I'll unfold it. Okay. Back to a square, with, we have the set of triangles. And the triangles are all right angle triangles here. 
right? Let me, I, I, I'm used to those explaining too technically also because I've been teaching the postgraduates and all this. So <laughs> it's, sorry about that. I did not come back to very simplest of the form. Anyway, I'll try and make it right. Well, you can see a set of triangles, which are only right angle triangles. When I kept on making the folds, I was fed up getting the only the right angle triangles. So the monotony of getting the same form. So I just want to break that. What if it is an obtuse? What if it is an acute? So it's what the challenge that I took. And I broke the monotony of a right angle triangle and there's so many other things started happening there. Take a look at this. I'll use a marker there and this explain the theorem hidden here. I've not used any pencil or compass or whatever to draw this. It's just the fold that I made, creating a boat, unfolded it back to the square. Now I just, out of this, I'll just consider this triangle. Let's see. Okay, I'll consider this triangle. The right angle triangle. Okay. Correct. Right angle at this corner. Just for demonstration purpose, just understand what is hidden in the folds so that you understand what could happen also with the complex of the folds that you can make. Okay. Well, this is what it is. And now you have the square. I'll, I'll take a square. This is the hypotenuse. Okay. I've got the ABC, right? You have the square. I have marked one more square on the other side. I'll, have one, I'll mark one more square on the other side. Right? Now, this is what the Pythagoras theorem looked like to me when the fold was there. There's nothing that was drawn with the pencil. But look at that. What we prove here is that the area of the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the area of the two squares on the other two sides. This is it is. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's it. So suddenly it was like a nuclear explosion in my mind, like, you no, know, like. Come on, what is this? This is a Pythagoras theorem. Then there's some, something else might also be hidden here, right? So I kept on exploring in terms of folds only, what we call the non Euclidean mathematics, right? The, the only with the folds. We do not use any compass or straight edge or pencil or protractor, whatever of that sort as a tool. We just keep pulling it. We call it the algorithms, right? And we develop those kind of proving theorems through the folds, which is very fascinating. And also, an object comes out of that. And that's the beauty of that. As you can see, I made a board out of this. Beneath that, we have the Pythagoras theorem that's hidden. That way, the, the, the conjugation is what we call, right? That's what made me a mad kind of a thing to come very close to the paper there. And once the geometry is understood, I think we can break the geometry and create so many other things. That's what happens. So basic understanding of the geometry is very, very essential. So that once you know the geometry, you can break the geometry, it becomes very easy. That's what the art is. Art has no rule. So once you know the rules of basics, you can keep breaking them out in order to create the more things. How That's deep how the, the fascination began? Oh, this is wonderful. I mean, it's fascinating. How deep can you go into the subject? There's no end to it. It's like getting into a jungle there. Absolutely, right? I think the kind of thing that I've done, I think uh, th there's no end to it as such. You know, the kind of thing that you make up, create, uh, the prototyping that happens, all with the geometrical applications. Thought. So what happens is that in mathematics, we have so many relations, right? Multiplication, division, whatnot, fraction, so many things. Like but how do you express them in terms of folds is what that really matters. So once you get graduated in terms of folds, you start expressing all these kind of uh, uh, relationships. Oh, it's also a problem. It's okay, go ahead. Can you put, please put your camera off? The girl who's showing the boat, please, we'll do that later. I know, I know, good enough, good enough, good, good, good. Right, okay, I was explaining that. See, uh, okay, when, when, you are, when you graduate yourself to a level in terms of folds, I'm not talking about the cuts, huh? I'm talking only about the folds. So when you get graduated to a level of folds, you'll start expressing these kind of mathematical relationships in terms of reflections, in terms of transformations, in terms of symmetry. These are all the three things that happens as you keep folding the paper. Any square paper that you take, you make any damn thing, be it parrot, be it penguin, be it uh, crane or whatever it is for that matter, whatever that you feel, a flower or a butterfly, whatever, right? So it's just how you start off. But ultimately, the, what happens is that you start expressing these kind of mathematical relationships in terms of reflection, transformation, and symmetry, which is a really fascinating thing. And it, it just goes seamless, you know, like the permutation combination of that. You, you start visualizing it much better. So ultimately, the insights improve and ultimately the perspective will, will come fall in place. That's how we start creating the objects of the paper. That's just the only, can, 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 we, can we only teach maths in it or can we also go into science and other subjects? 
No, uh, yeah, no, no. In the sense that how you how you exploit the folds is in your hands again, right? Basically, the approach has been mathematical. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely, as I said, right? Every fold that the regular traditional folds gives rise to right angle triangle patterns, right? And unless otherwise you want to break it, right? You want to do. I got really fed up of the monotony of the right angle triangle, so I want to break that and see what comes out of that, right? So I just want to break that. That's how the fascination is. It's all about that how you want. To how we want to exploit the paper and then the, the geometry that's underlying there. It, it, of course, it starts with mathematical approach, no doubt about it. So that's what I say, the today's kids, you know, for that matter, you know, just folding is, isn't enough. Folding paper isn't enough. Anybody can do it. Because now with the advent of YouTube, I think anybody can fold paper today. The thing is that, you know, like taking an approach to a fold is what that really makes a difference, right? A mathematical approach with the mathematical thoughts and proving a kind of concepts would really put you at a better state rather than just Folding something in a flower or butterfly or penguin or whatever that it doesn't take you anywhere. Maybe you may create something out of paper that calling yourself as fold or something like that. But a mathematical driven approach is much more, much more better for today's kids. But if you to learn but, the concept. Arun, I'm sorry to, sorry to cut you here. But no, no, the only no, thing no. you even creating flowers out of paper, hmm. the child learns something. What do you think that you will learn when you do just shapes? I mean, forget maths, forget learning, forget everything. I'm just oh, taking yeah, the paper, yeah. I'm playing with it at say at age mm -hmm. of say 10, 12, 13 or whatever. I created a flower mm -hmm. through origami, okay? But yeah, so what does yeah. the child learn in the whole process? Le 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 yeah, yeah, I got the learning outcome would be that, you know, like one is that the, the joy of creation, number one, right? One flat sheet of paper, you create something there. And maybe the, the flower could be a complex one also. Who knows? The, uh, that, 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 that is the level of complexity that because the simplest of the flower, the complex flowers. You know, like there are different levels in, in the folds also. You know, the simple, lower intermediate, intermediate, higher intermediate, then the complex. And now the super complex is also nice now, right? <laughs> so that way you how it depends on what kind of challenge that you take, how complex you want to make it. No, no doubt about that, you know, in terms of folds, yes, there, there is a, there is a lot of fascination in terms of creating it because it's, it starts with a flat sheet of paper and it takes a beautiful form. Of course, the complexity is there. Whatever level that you take, that that is what the fun that learns. But you want to drive. Even we may not be good in mathematics also. Basically, to think of, to think of, and to apply your mathematical thought onto a paper and create that. That that connect maybe may not be there. But you can still explore that folding as as a as a fun way of creating things, right? Because yeah, doesn't it, comes doesn't it even teach you things like patience and observation and you know? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. No, so what are, what are the life that. skills? So what are the life skills a child can learn from? Just folding paper, forget yeah. the higher levels. Yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. See, I, I catch up with the kids uh, at the weekends for two hours every week. Now, this online, I'll just catch up with them on online itself. Now, the parents keep telling me, like, no, like, I can't speak to my child for more than two minutes, but how do you hold them for two hours? Look at that, right? That's the difference. The father or the mother cannot speak to the child for more than two minutes. But whereas I can hold the child's attention for more than two hours. That's the order. Because all, all that matters is the activity that connects the teacher and the taught. You know, the patience or the curiosity. That's what I said. We know if I tell them in advance, they lose that interest. So instead, keep that curiosity alive. That's how it is, right? So and make them do things. And as as a thing come up, you know, they their expectation also grows up. The patience and all those things, that's what you know, like <laughs> rather the mathematics and the paper that has really taught me patience today of what I am today. <laughs> tons of tons of patience that I have. I work for hours and hours and days together. I don't know. I don't, I don't stop at all. Like my mind may get tired, but my heart will not get tired. I come back and continue to work. Yeah, so what that's, motivates that's the you? So that what motivates you? It, it is more, the paper motivates me. What else? The, the paper is my material. You know, that motivates me. Like whatever I think of doing it, I just take, draw the paper and just start working with it. It's as simple as that. So until I reach the finish line, because people give up in the middle. That's, that's a big problem. That. Because I know it's difficult. It's not easy. It's not easy. I know. It's bad. This is when the mathematical thought are there, and you know you want to bring up, bring it a kind of a model like this with a lot of patience, and the, the level of patience has to be consistent throughout. You know, if you are good in the beginning, at the end you lose your patience, and the work gets spoiled. So that should not happen, right? You know that that's how the patience, consistency of patience. The problem is that you know, like interest is a matter. Right? The interest is there. The patience comes. In. Patient doesn't develop actually. So it's interest that's the base point. Not the patients, according to me. I think if you have an interest, I think patients as is a byproduct. That's what I feel. So, and uh, I, I look at things like and I I do aero models, I do I do um, geometrical things, you know, like so many things, you know, whatever the concept that really strikes me mathematically, otherwise also nowadays. Because the sculpturally I I literally sculpt the paper, right? So otherwise with the mathematical thought only I do that. Because as I said, there is the kind of a mental skill that I work with. 
though i though i don't make any standard markings or measurements you know like but i get started with a kind of a measurement approximation and then start handling the paper there bring it to a form so that is how the mathematical thought is is the basis of that without which i think you can't just start up with that otherwise you keep making the small objects then and then do you think parents can learn around. this i don't yes. do you think parents should learn these kind of art forms yeah yeah so they can engage the children much better yeah what's your advice yeah, to parents it's not it's not necessary that they should learn and that's yeah yeah it, uh, it, it's not necessary that they should learn and then start working with the kids better to let, let them also learn along with the kids <laughs> i i i don't get that perfect doesn't perfect. matter you be alert when i'm alert i even to this date right i i call my i'm i'm a elbow to that extent i've been working with 40 years i think I, I i think i need one more life maybe to do something sizable in terms of paperwork you know i feel like that you know like so that's how it is like you know we start with that whatever whatever you have whatever you you are whatever you can start with that i think that's the best way to start off see i, uh, I maybe know. mathematical approach may not come to you but uh, but i think folding per se should 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 be a good past time for you to both to you to, know one of the uh, things uh, uh, what i call the quality time you know one of the things which uh, always <laughs> hoopsters keep we at hoopsters keep saying is that people don't develop any kind of hobbies or arts any art forms you know they don't take it up ah. so what is i i want you to explain as to the importance of a hobby you know both from the parents point of view Beautiful. and from the child's point of view huh. will look here look here i i i i'm a 66 born kid <laughs> right so my father introduced me to a lot of hobbies right from stamp collection right my he was he was he was a diploma holder by then right you know and um, he was very technical you know like my mother was doing a lot of embroidery and you know, all she was very creative so i could see both of them working you know they put me some thought of thought in my mind you know so i developed both that uh, the technical as well as creative bent of mind you know both together and that's what i blend even today so i my father used to tell me that you know like hobbies are rubies of life beautiful i cannot forget maybe i was in seventh grade or something i think i when he had told me that hobbies are rubies of life you will find the essence of the life only when you have hobbies with you not otherwise he said and he introduced me to the different hobbies various hobbies amazing guy right? amazing guy right? i lost him at a very young age when i was doing my ms previous i lost him to cancer maybe i think he contributed a lot in terms of showing you what life is and how you can how you can you know like be be creative all by yourself like without disturbing anybody else or maybe borrowing anything that is expensive or all that that's how it began like you know like hobbies need not be you know when you think talk of a hobby like people think that of that logistic this logistics you know that it cost that much thousand this much thousand that's not required you know like with no material i started working let me tell you very frankly i used to go in such of papers i still remember there was a printing press next to my house i used to go and borrow the scraps of paper that has come out of the machines so day when the printing press owner asked me what to do with these scraps then i came back home and did what, whatever that i did i just went in showed it to him then he was he felt very fascinated i did a lot of curling this then you know bunting so many things i had done then he see was really fascinated he just i still, I still remember as a small boy by then he, he he could hold my hand he took me to the basement of the printing press he gave me a large sheet maybe i think it's an a1 or a2 i don't know like it must be an a1 sheet in called as so he gave me that take this do whatever you want i i was looking at it like you know like i put some some treasure or something like that one sheet of paper he gave me one large full sheet of paper i i brought it so safely to my home and you know like i worked on that so safely and you know without wasting it and i went and showed him what i did with that sheet so as i can get the next supply of paper look at that that's how i developed respect for the material my mother, my father used to tell me that he was mentor he was my mentor he said materials are gods look at that materials are gods not to discredit the root respect you know they stamp on that they, they, they just they throw away the materials and all that no you you learn that basically you learn that then everything else comes but is it the fault of the parents who don't uh, take time to teach their kids this i think yes you know like i understand if you don't have time there's nothing much you can do about it because if you have if you have interest time comes to you right that's how it is it's as simple as that you know extremely i'm extremely busy going out traveling and all that you know during the lockdown i did a lot of uh, paper toys development now so, so that way so because i was it was impending actually so i was i wanted that focus time to be there so that i can focus and develop it and completely finish it out so that's how it is like you know like depends you know like if if you really want to make something i think you can take time out if you say i don't have time i think there's nothing much you can nothing do anybody can do yes you know you have been to a lot of schools you teach a lot of kids across all age groups where what do you think the teacher should learn 
and how can your art form uh, i mean learn about your art form how can it benefit teachers yeah yeah, yeah. the problem is that you know like the the teach now every everybody is a marxist everybody is running behind the marx the real world out is something different please understand that please understand that maybe some i'm telling you the very frankly i'm telling you i'm into computational mathematics now so you look at this see the many parents boast of the son or daughter being extremely good in mathematics say scoring 95 98 99 100 100 sometimes right that is not needed actually let me tell you very frankly because the kind of calculation that we do you know, maybe is good in fast in doing calculations and all that but my computer is gives me all the data too i don't have to be too fast in terms of doing mathematics but what really matters is that it's the end of the day it's the data right the output that what you get in terms of a solution so how you use that data matters so you got to be creative not 100 out of 100 in mathematics so that is what the funda that i realized so that means you are connecting the dot has to be very optimal like you know you want unless you understand the different concepts and how it can be combined you cannot create anything in this world technical world particularly and the teachers for that matter you know like it becomes so kind of a ford factory kind of a rigid environment you know that you come you learn you We, we give them marks and send them home. The knowledge still remains with the teacher. That's, that that should end. That should end. I've been telling that you know, like in the technical world, learn teach those conceptual thinking to the kids. I keep, especially in the maths class, I keep telling my students, you know, like maths is very simple, provided you understand. No, I got, I, I make them tell that right every time I repeat in order to build their confidence. Maths is very simple, provided they reply, you understand. so that means understanding should be at two levels not to make the mathematics as a subject simple one is that at the conceptual level and another is that procedural level so separate them i know uh, the way i have been taught maths you know i got 36 marks in my 10th grade <laughs> i just passed my 10th uh, maths 36 marks the reason is that you know like the, that that is how the teach, teachers were very humble those years but the water of the little that they knew they told us in the way the same way but now it is not so it's a technical world so now you need to be Uh, hands on the teachers needs to be hands on and try and learn the new methods also not to teach you learn to teach that's the way there's no other go absolutely otherwise you get burned and over period of time like this is as simple as that you'll be just simply phased out so that's how it is like you le- you learn to teach you got to do that there's no other go absolutely so there are methods to it how 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 simply simply for because anyway maths is about simplification right? but how how you also make it more interactive more creative right teaching creativity is different than creative teaching methods again you, you can use these kind of things tangrams for that matter right you can be used like that so how you use the existing materials not just that you are going to create some new input so you, you got to be creative in that direction got to be creative open your minds maybe and not all teachers are crafty in terms of trying out new things and putting it to students got to be good at it otherwise you can just start experimenting before the students they start laughing at you so that's how it is like so got to be very rigid in terms of outcome then implement it in the classroom i think that's what i think i advise for the teachers so the teachers particularly and the students they know i mean they have that open mind they can always learn they have that open mind and they are that better learners in a way like they don't have any thought block as i see them only thing is those concepts need to be taught to them in in a dose form so that and build on their complexity not just putting everything at once that becomes difficult for them they get confused also in terms of skills i'm very i mean i mean i have known you for so long and it's such so wonderful to see you speak like this you know it's actually i mean actually, actually i've seen you from i think i don't know how many years now <laughs> and it's wonderful wonderful to see the way you're thinking and way you are actually promoting the whole art form and i would like to take this opportunity also to tell the all the children out there watching the show and the parents for heaven sake get yourself a hobby okay i think that's the most important thing in today's world because the kind of jobs that are going to be there in the future are going to be very very different getting yeah. 100 marks in your subjects are not going to help you at all and that's a truth yeah. coming from all the people who are in the in the field and who understand what the future is holding for them the second yeah. is i think parents and children should spend more time you know so they can engage themselves and, and i think the i know the covid scenario nowadays and everyone's creeping about staying at home but i think it's a brilliant opportunity to interact with the, the family members and learn new things and you can always look at it positively uh, and i don't i want i want to i'll give you 10 minutes of your time you got 50, 40 odd children out there okay who are looking at all excited thing what they can do 10 minutes is your stage okay yeah you can do what you want then i'll come back to something which you say said something very interesting about yourself 
you call yourself a paper engineer. Hmm. We'll discuss that after we come back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So five minutes. Five minutes is good enough, right? Let's be. Yeah, five, five, should, five, five should be five, five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, you tell me when yeah. you're through. But engage the children, surprise them, make them like love the art. I'll, you know, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. And I'll all do that. yours. So yeah, children, yeah. you can ask. You can ask questions on the chat room. Okay, whoever wants to ask questions, don't come on mic. Don't come on the videos. Just type yeah. on the chat room. I'll show. You read the. You read the questions for me, Bala. I'll read that. I'll read that for you. I know. That, that should be good. That should be good. I, I, mean, I, I can have to wear my specs. And so I can you guys have fun for the next five minutes. I'm not too good I, with technology. So I'm not too good with technology. No, I, mean, I don't want to. Yeah, that interface. That's perfect. You can join the gang. Good enough. Right. Okay. Ask questions, guys, on chat room. Enjoy your thing. Five minutes. He'll show you some very, I mean, fun things to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Look here. Right. I'll I'll begin with the very simpler ones. Right. Well, I have started with the folds and cuts. I've been cutting and folding papers since my childhood. That's what really fascinates me. And I know like a lot of learning happened as a child. A lot of learning. I don't know. There's nothing new that has happened except for that I put my mathematical thought in the technicality and challenging myself to create something. It's what that happened of late when I grew up. But as a childhood experience, I think it's enormous. I don't know. Like I, I literally see those days even today, like, you know, like my mom saying that, cut to your heart, fold to your heart. Is it enough? Do whatever you want, something like that. You know, imagine that kind of a, a limitless kind of a, a freedom that's given to you. That's what an artist wants. Okay, good enough. Right? These are the few things that what I did. I and I'm amazing at I'm 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 too good with paper cuts. Like if somebody I had I had a workshop for the doctors at Manipal Hospital or something like that. They called me the paper surgeon, right? You know, the precise cut only to that extent. Nothing more than that. Nothing short of it. Okay, that's what makes it work perfect. And I combine the cut and folds together. That really fascinates me that gives the movement or the action to the paper itself. You can bring paper to life just by tools. Okay. I'll explain a few of the works that I've done now very crazily in the next five, 10 minutes. Then we proceed further. There, there could be some, there's some possible interruptions there. There's nothing much, nothing much you can do about it. I hope I'm back. You're back. Yeah. You're back. Well, this, this is the monkey. I love monkeys. Yeah, you, you can follow me on the Instagram. Right, Studio Chitte is my uh, handler name. You can I, I keep posting my works there. S T U D I O C H I T T E. My studio name is Chitte. Could you please uh, uh, allow me to share the screen, uh, Bala? After this, one minute. I think it's not there. No, it's not there. Bala, could you please allow, allow me to share share the screen? I can't let you unless you host it. I'll put it up. I'll put it up. Don't worry. Oh, you want oh, to share? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Well, this is the combination of cut and folds. The monkey claps. Right? The simplest of the cut and folds. Okay. I don't want to keep the paper static. I want to animate that. Well, this is this is, this is the feathery finish that I've given it to a rooster. Okay. This flat is. This is a one sheet. One sheet. Have you logged them? Right. I don't use adhesives nowadays. I just I developed a technique called buckle locking. Right. Without using the adhesive, I just lock the layers so that I can open them to a flat. Okay. Well, this is. I work. I work with the engineering models with the Volvo and all that, particularly. Right. This is very fascinating. Good the precision. Okay. So this is one thing. This simple machines and I borrow the concepts from the science and maths. So that you you make things out of that, right? It could be resistance, it could be an oscillation, it could be a, a, a vibrations and all that, right? So this is one thing that I made here. I used the five rupee coin to create the pendulum. Pendulum when it oscillates, it gives rise to a momentum. And the same thing I just powered it to the wings of the butterfly, right? That's it. That's my studio name, Chitte. C H I T T E. Chitte meaning butterfly in Canada. I'm in Canada. So Studio Chitte is my handler name in Instagram. You can just follow me on the Instagram, Studio Chitte. Right? That's how it is. The simpler ones you can make. Well, I use a cloth line clip here. I just, this is the logo of my studio. Right? You can just give it a movement there. Using the ordinary material, that's what I was doing as a child. So maybe I think the same thing I just developed it further. Right? Well, these are the simple machines what I've done out of paper. There's a police system there. 
you can raise and lower the pulleys there. It's completely made of paper. And I put a flag on the top end of it so that you can see the, the rotation of it. So all the mechanisms that are not paper there. I work with the high-end engineering models, particularly Volvo and the Cummins India. Right. I kept the bottom end open so that you can see the bottom, what is happening there as a mechanism. Right. That's a butterfly. That's the very first logo of my studio, Studio Chitte, when I launched it in 2007. Right. Completely it's made of paper, it's a complete paper construction. Right. Depends on how you give a volume to the paper. Right. Not only it's a single sheet, but how you give a volume to the paper, thickness and the strength to the paper. Here's a weight lifter. You can tie a weight of about 100 grams here. He lifts the weight. Right? It's completely made of paper, including the rivets. Rivets are also made of paper there, so that it doesn't get worn out fast. Okay? I'll show you a very interesting one small pet that I have made. We'll come to this later. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll explain before I show the work, this work. Well, this is the set of triangles. How mathematically you derive to come to a form and then create a product. This is what the one small process I'll explain there. You'll understand it, appreciate better also. Here we have a set of eight equilateral triangles. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of the equilateral triangles. Set of eight equilateral triangles. Okay. I just fold them such a way as to, I just form a hexahedra. Hexahedra means six sides, three here and three here. Can make out there. Okay. The same thing can be done as an octahedra also. You can do it like this. Correct? It's an octahedra. Four here, four here. Like that. So each each one manipulation gives us different forms. The base folds are the same. That is how the conjugation happens geometrically. Very interesting, very fascinating areas. Okay. Having made the hexahedra now, take a look at this. This is a form that I generated, but how do, how do I give a character or a function or a meaning to it? Is what I was looking at. Okay, no doubt I got the form here, hexahedral there. Now I just developed a one small toy here, like this, nothing but a mouse. Okay, I just added a one tail there, small tail detail. The same thing, I just cut as a C cut and open them as the ears and use a perforator to make the eye legs or the eye details. Okay. And in paper engineering is that the problem is that even if you add anything as a paper piece or whatever, the weight of the paper as the weight of the glue also adds to the whole of the object. So that also needs to be considered when you make the construction. Very interesting that. So instead of pasting it, I thought, let me just use the same real estate of the paper, cut and then open the ears there and punch the eye holes. They are negative again, right? It's all about playing about negative and positive spaces. Very interesting. Now I made a small stage for this and now just it moves around. Okay, it moves around the stage. And the beauty is that, you know, like it's very disciplined. My mouse is very disciplined in the sense that I put a marble inside and I put it horizontally like this. When I, when I give it as a little slope to the stage, it will not slide like this, sideways. It will turn its head to the front and then come here. That's the beauty of that. Take a look at this. Look at it, it started turning, right? It, it, I've kept it like this. Now I just give it a little slide. It comes with the head front. That's being perfect with the construction there. Okay. It's very interesting. I keep playing with it when I'm stressed out. I play it a number of times. A small pet. Okay, I don't feed, I don't feed it. It's beautiful. That's the way you just give a form. There's something known as forms in geometry. Very interesting area like to develop them. Okay, based on a uh, golden, uh, golden rectangle, golden ratio, so many things are there. There's, there's, there's no end to it. Well, this is what the thing that I had in my mind. I made up Sudarshan Chakra, right? It has the serrated edges. You can see them at the edge. That's, but it's very special to me. Like, look at what happens now. This Sudarshan Chakra it just collapses flat, comes back to action, right? That's something special with this. That you can just manipulate the geometry to bring it to the form and to make it work my aim is only that not just making a static object slide to make the object work 
making it is one side of it and making it work is the next next thing well this is a woodpecker that i have made and i'll just now right i'll just stand up and then show you the demo of this i'll just tap it down it just slides down right in a pecking action the whole of the weight of the object needs to be considered due to the milligram right to the last milligram then it performs better it's based on the resistance i have developed this toy right you have other things also like based on the vibration i have made kathakali and the you know yakshagana toys i have made right based on this i just tap the stage they just dance around the stage i made two of that well i have the frog here this is one sheet development i mean i got the entire anatomy of the frog exact as i expected it but i wanted the frog to hop so i created a z fold which acts as a springboard which just just hops right which is very strong that way it's just creating that action i want that action to be created i want that because this whole point is just giving the paper a just static look <coughs> Okay. Well, that is a flat sheet of paper. I made it as a sphere, perfect sphere. I'll open it and show you. It's a it's not a flat sheet. Here, the folds get congregated. I'll just unfold them. This is what the fold pattern is. So unfold. I come back to the flats. Okay. Here, I fold. I folded two kinds of folds put together. Okay. We make the folds one over the other. But what if the folds are made one besides the other? Right. We call it as a Defined curve. A defined curve is the one whose eccentricity is known. Right? That's how it is. Right? Something very classic. I'll just show you another one that's again based on the golden ratio. Right? This could be a lampshade, but based on a golden rectangle. The golden rectangle tilted to a 72 degrees becomes a golden parallelogram. I just divided diagonally half. So then I made a matrix of six by five. This is a base of five in pentagon. So I made a six. Tiers one two three four five six six by five. You can make it any size, whatever whatever the matrix that you can use. That is the rule. Right? We just lock the layers to get that because adhesives you got to be very very careful when you put that when you while you're putting the adhesives you got to be very careful. Once you even if you know small things splits off, I think the entire thing gets lost. The moment itself is lost. That's why you got to be very careful. I try and make it in a dry process. Okay, this is a flat sheet. Look at this. I just what happens. I just pull it out. Right, it's a step that I made. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. It's it's a hollow construction. You can see through that. Right, that's how the locking happens. That's the slip combination slip. What we call it. Okay. Well, that's that is the very first logo of mine. Chitte. Right. It's never ending. It's infinite. Infinite, right? Just four squares locked together. Locking mechanisms can be different. There are systems where you can follow the locking systems, where each locking system gives us a different action, right? That is that is the fun. That is the fun of making these objects. Everything is hundred percent of paper construction, but these are called the cubic constructions. I hope it's right. Yeah. It collapses like that. Part. The cube. Anyway, again, there's a whole world of, world of the solids. When you intersect the two solids and divide the solids, a new world opens up. That's another fascination there. Okay, I'll, I'll just show you another one that's very crazy. I make pay for that. Well, you can make the paper appear very sophisticated. It's compacted form. I'll just open it. Look at that. It's called stellation, right? You can make. I made it more paper, plain paper, more, more sophisticated like this by creating the multiple folds over it. Looks pointed. Salamin star. 
Star Blast. Okay. I'll show this one. It, I don't know whether it works or not, right? But I'll just, I hope it, I'll bring it to the camera level here. I'll make some, do some surface work. Well, well this, this is the small landscape I created for it. And based on the center of gravity, I created this elephant. Basically, circular construction. Well, center of gravity is the center where the entire object, weight of the object is supposed to concentrate. So I just divided the center of gravity into two halves, front and back. Okay, this being the central axis of the elephant, I just divided the weight into two halves. So now this is what happens: is this road got little undulated. So I'm don't know whether it's going to work properly or not, but still we'll try it. This is how the action takes place. I'll just pull the tail of the elephant. Just walks down the slope. Right. right, because there are undulations to it. Because I use that material called Eva, so that got little undulated, and you know that's why it's not going smoothly. Right, maybe there's a hump in between, so it stops. Otherwise, it moves till the down. Okay, I create a small landscape at the back of it. That's the helicoid. There are, there are maths is like I use maths as a language. So I just derive whatever you want. Try it out with the paper. Okay. I'll just clip it over on the top and just see this. Two helical structures get locked. Okay. Right. Helicoids, spheroids, oloids. There's no end as it just keeps coming. Well, these are a few things. Other things are too technical for you to, for the kids to understand, you know, like that in terms of product design and industry design. And product design. That is, I mean, that's wonderful, yeah. And I'm like. This is a small, uh, it's a dodecad. decade. And the solid is one thing that needs to be taught even for the kids. They can understand those attributes of a solid. We have the tetrahedra, we have the octahedra, we have the cube, we have the icosahedra, and we have the dodecahedra. This simplified solids, let them understand before going to the college or maybe to the plus two level for that matter. Let them see them as a solid. That's enough, I think. You make a lot of difference in terms of their learning and utilization because the same thing is going to come up in the higher education there. So we need to be open to those kind of concepts. So it's all about conceptual learning. I think I'm more, more stressed upon that. Because uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the rush to finish off the portions into exams, what not, parent teacher meetings, so many things get lost. We're trying to make the difference, you know, like there's a difference between two, these two. Look at this the basic, this shape being the icosahedron here. Look at the complexity. This is more complex and this is very simple to make. Equally, this is also complex, no doubt, but to derive the form is more complex to make than this. This is how the, the conjugation happens. One work leads to the other. So, this is how the, the learning happens. It, it will build you the experiential base for further learning. That's what happens. <laughs> yes, but uh, amazing stuff. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I have no words for it. What happened? You lost your light at home? Hello? Uh-oh. Sorry, guys. He seems to have lost the power at home. It's been a... <clears throat> okay, I'll take this opportunity to invite all the schools to Hoopsters. I mean, I'm glad you guys are here, and I hope you're enjoying the whole show. Let's just wait for the power to come at uh, Mr. Arun's place. There's lots more that needs to be showcased. Uh, yeah, I have Mania Naveen telling, asking me, if great, if you could share this knowledge. Yes, uh, Hoopsters is tying up with uh, Arun uh, and uh, with a lot of other domain experts to bring to you exciting things like this, especially in terms of... Um, hobbies and life skills and mental health and things like that. So it would be nice if you, the schools can contact us or, you know, we can contact you whichever way. Let us know how to contact you. Lot more exciting stuff's coming in. Please log on to hoopsters.in. You will see the kind of activities we are bringing in. For the first time, we are creating a community called the League of Action Heroes. And the whole idea is, can we create exposure? Can we create a platform for you guys to share things? And if you guys got talent, please share your talent with us. It's an open platform. The platform is not an expert to an audience kind of, you know, scenario. I'm just hoping he'll get the power back. Can you just give me a second, please? 
Well, I'm back. I'm yeah, back. I know. I can see you. Thank you. Okay. I mean, we're getting a lot of wonderful responses from people. And we've got some very interesting schools that have come uh, visiting us, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I don't know. There's a um, message from Sanjana who says, how do papers become so thick and hard? Uh, no, I, you showed I, those... Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My, regarding my work, is it? Okay. Yes, your uh, work. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Good enough. Look here. So, yeah, I, 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 to put it very simply, uh, well, a paper uh, is very flimsy, right? It, it is a regular copy of paper what I've taken here. I'm a person who demonstrates everything. I don't explain. I don't honestly do the storytelling and all that. I don't do that. I'm, instead of getting to the, I'll just hit on the target there, right? Okay. Yeah. How paper become very strong? Good enough. Very good question. Very nice question. Very sensible question also. Well, paper for that matter would only vary in terms of its thickness. Starting with the copy of paper, it's about 70 GSM, grams per square meter. Okay, 80, 90, 100, go up to 450. Okay, I work with all kind of papers. But what happens is that to me, like, paper is a flesh, right? If, if I make the paper stand, it doesn't stand, it just falls down. Correct? Now, what I do is I just fold it half exactly. In this case, exactly half. It could be to whatever extent that depends on your work. I give it a crease, temporary fold, made a permanent fold. I open it half now and I make it stand. Now the paper stands on its own. Correct? What is the difference? The difference is only the one fold that I created over it. Meaning what? The, what I realized working with paper is that paper to me is a flesh. And the folds that you create over the paper will act as bones. As you have a skeletal system within the body, right? Which makes it stand erect. Same way as the role of the folds there. Okay? Added to that, instead of drawing a line with a pencil there, I fold and I play around with the geometry. That's the approach, okay? So the, the paper considerably gets the strength by multiple folds. The more you fold on the paper, the more the strength that it gets. That's how the structure stands up. I made even the structures for two, three meter tall, right? All of the paper, maybe a 220 GSM difference, right? The thickness of paper. But when constructed, you know, they stand up on their own, like without any support, without any scaffolding or skeletons inside or whatever. That is, that is the wonder of the paper. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Suppose you're given one minute, okay? Yeah. One mm. minute. In one minute, can you do something which can excite me using a paper? Okay, all the guys watch minute. this very seriously. It's going to be very exciting. I take less than one minute. It's already 6.15, minute of time. Just finish it off. That's butterfly. Chitte for you. Studio chitte for you. Hmm. Add the cut and folds together. Right? Bring paper to life. That's what I'm mad with. Okay. I know we are running out of time, but then, okay. When you say you're a paper engineer, what do you mean? Okay. It's, it's all about getting the concepts of engineering, bit of technology also there, science concepts, mathematics, and art all blended together on one sheet of paper and to develop them to a product is mainly is that and of course most of the paper engineering products are action oriented they have action in them they have moments in them like this one for that matter okay it, it's a simpler form i would say right but there could be more complex forms also other than this which is really fascinating in terms of one one input there are many actions that takes place across the object that's the complexity that one can do. Bring all the concepts together, bringing it on one sheet of paper. That's, that is what the, the, the challenge is. Not that you try to put in that, this together here. It's not like that. Just one sheet of paper developing to a form. That's what the, the, the play of geometry comes into play. Okay. Yes, please. That's very interesting. I think, uh, you know, I don't know, I was going through your bio and you have uh, mentioned that you're invited to a lot of, you know, to do some backstage work for magic shows film shoots, corporate presentations, corporate, you know, displays. 
So tell us a bit about it. I mean, as a career, see, the, oh, today, today yeah, everyone's yeah. worried about, is there a career in, you know, trying to learn origami? Yeah, it can't be just origami for per se that way. Like what happens in the today's world, uh, accuracy and the speed matters. That's it. And the third point is, needless to mention, the honesty that you work with. So people trust me for the deadlines that I meet with them, right? Maybe I'm too good with accuracy in terms of making it, right? Speed also for that matter. But I deliver things on time. So I manage my timeline much better. I know because I'm a one-man army. I don't outsource any of my work. No way. Or I do everything by myself. That's where my, even my learning happens. It is the world of outsourcing. I think many things are outsourced as a fashion or maybe as a time-saving device or something like that. I don't do that. I don't want to do it also in the future. So I don't know, like I take it on a very limited basis. It's all hand-produced works. I take it on a very limited basis. I, I export my works. I work with the high-ended brands for the shoots and all this, so many things like design and displays and so many things. Uh, that way I'm, I'm happy with it. I know it's, it's too strenuous to work on all sides of your uh, work, but I think that makes me learn better also. So and to integrate is a, it's, it's a big challenge. So uh, an openness to do work at different levels. I think that's what really, right from procuring the material and you know, to give it a finishing touch is what that really makes me happy. That so I think your uh, speed, accuracy and the honesty in terms of delivery will make you uh, uh, tick. Okay, I, I'm, a lot of kids have said we want to learn this, we want to learn that. So I want to yeah. tell all of them that yes, we'll be doing a lot of activities with Arun in combination with Hoopsters and you'll, we'll definitely you'll hear from us on those things. There are a lot of big plans that are you know, scheduled and you will hear about it. So all about your learning, definitely it will happen very soon. That's one, one aspect. The second is uh, they want to, to know how to start. So how does a child start? Yeah, exactly. Look here, yeah, it is, uh, uh, I, I don't uh, advocate any start point as such. You know, like, uh, as I was saying, like, you know, bro, Whatever you have, whenever you are, whatever you can do, just start off. That's 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 the beginning of it. Because uh, I feel that you know, like maybe I I developed my own psyche of working with paper, right? I I have my own way of approaching the paper. Another at the end of forty years working with paper, I humbly put it that I've learned how to handle a paper. That's all. That's all I can say, right? But once you understand the materiality, I think you can work wonderfully. So understanding the material goes a long, 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 long way than to just cut and fold and paste. So that's what I realized. I, I, I took a very, very laser look, you know, like, otherwise I, I, I would not uh, mind. Sometimes, you know, I break down at the paper, the kind of the response that the paper gives me. Like, I, I think of contouring the paper. No? It, folds are quite easier to make, you know, solid corner objects and all that. But how do you contour the paper? How do you give it a fluid form? It's a, it's a big challenge. So when I, when I especially like the, uh, some of the sculptures that I work on the, wildlife series and all that. I have not showed you that, it is right here. So that way, like, you know, like when I, when I feel that the tiger face has come up to be very nice, has contours of the face, the flat sheet of paper having beautiful contours, I really bet down you know, because paper responds to me such a way. So I love paper so much, you know, like the way the paper responds to me, I also feel that paper equally loves me also. So, Responds to me, like it doesn't, it does not let me down so far. So you're too, too aggressive, you can't be too heavy. It doesn't behave the same way throughout. So you got to manage it like it. it's a stubborn child, you know, and just handle it and get what you want from the paper. That's a very tricky situation, which I just can't <laughs> explain it uh, in a storytelling form or whatever. So it's an experience that I've gone through. I told you, I break down sometimes, so especially those sculptures that I worked for 16, 17, 18 hours continuously, because sculptures that tension has to be built up, otherwise I won't get the finish. It's not like doing a measurement, a modular construction where you measure one day, mark one day, cut one day, paste one day, it's okay. You get the form. But whereas the sculptures, it's not so. That is the difference. You've got to continuously work. And the anxiety is a very big factor in that. So like, when it's more, you're, the more anxious you are, the more the better the output is. So you're so scared of it because the finish line, you no, know, gone go wrong somewhere in terms of pasting or giving it a form. Yeah, all your previous work goes best. That's the best. Uh, I don't, yeah, we'll close the next two, two questions. Any, yeah, any questions? 6.20, yeah. Please, yeah. please wrap it up. Okay, I'm going to write it up. 
anything else you would like to say arun you got a minute work with a sense of possibility that's what i stand for i i don't know what i'm going to create i have a vague idea in my mind maybe sometimes i i do riyas in my mind you know like when i think of doing something i i fold i cut i paste everything do in my mind itself that I, I, i think so much my visualization is so much mind my insights are so much my perspectives have become so rich but i think one we need one need to practice that right work with a sense of possibility i think it that's takes you a beautiful direction that's i don't know like that's the process that i enjoy and i stand for that yes bala okay last question hoopstill is a platform which is offering all this to people if you are known about it you have gone through what we do uh why do you think something like hoopsters is important is yes, that the question to me yes uh, i i i i i could hear your question again could you please uh, said, a platform like hoopsters how important do you think it is i had many platforms like you know like for the iits you know like I, I teach at nft i teach at nid national web design so many things like you know like but i think since i'm connecting with the kids it means a lot that we, because i know I, i i take my time out of the weekends to connect with the kids the kids are amazing they are naturally creative so don't put that bracket sound to them you know like to do only this much and all that give them freedom i think that's the best way to get connected with the kids i think i uh, the other day i was in the airport you know like before the, the second wave hit i was traveling so i was sitting in an airport and a couple of uh, people kids were there around you know the flight got delayed you know, like i just took my paper out and started folding and did something for that their face was lit and the boarding call came you know they were running away with the parent but they were still looking at me so that is the way like you know like these kids are amazing like so i it's, it's it's a wonderful experience teaching kids that's why i take time out to teach the kids even today no matter what level of post graduation the master of design programs that i handle i still take time out to be with the kids because they taught me one thing that's beautiful let me express that the ability to think smart it taught me that that my guru is that my guru is because it's the ability to think small that makes things bigger that's it the bigger picture emerges only with your small thoughts to be there that's my final comments mala thanks a lot uh okay guys i hope you had a great uh, evening i mean i enjoyed it I and mean, i know him for so long and i've seen his work one one work work one word you can just follow me on this instagram studio chitty i think you can follow my works well, there yeah it will be more, more better you can follow me you can track my works yeah track basically. his works because yeah. see i known him for a long long time okay but even i was surprised what he has come up to you know that something i had personally not anticipated i knew what he was doing i knew what where, where he was but i think seeing him talk today and seeing you show your stuff when has been definitely very exciting it's a lovely evening spent definitely brother not doing anything so all the kids out there please follow how be how be uh you can contact hoopsters anytime you want you can check check up chitte anytime you want there's a lot of exciting things coming in there are teachers who are present out there their management somebody if there is anybody please contact hoopsters i have shared my number shared my email id for anything else because hoopsters is doing lot more than these kind of webinars you know and our whole idea is to build a community called the league of action heroes you know where people are very proactive and there's a lot of exciting exciting stuff is happening across across various platforms across various domains and our targets are basic uh, schools children and parents oh. we address all three groups so guys thank you for attending the show it was wonderful having you guys on board and that's my little dog saying that just to have to go and play so i have no choice but to back up okay thank you guys have a lovely evening take care okay bye